It's hard enough to navigate your own health, let alone try to talk to a doctor that doesn't fully understand what you're looking for when it comes down to your blood tests. Now, I'm not a doctor, so full disclaimer, do not misconstrue what I am saying for medical advice. But what I did want to provide you with was a few given tests that you could go to your doctor with and say, hey, can you test me for these? Okay, the cool thing about the types of tests that I'm gonna lay out in this video is they're all basic ones that your doctor can provide for you. They're not these random obscure tests that you're gonna have to pay an arm and a leg to get done. Okay, these are ones that you can go to your doctor and they can put them on a standard lipid panel or they can put on a standard hormone panel, anything like that. So let's make it really easy. Now I do wanna make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon so you can always get notified whenever I post new videos or whenever I'm breaking down new information for you. Okay, the first one, but these aren't in any order of importance, this is just listing them off, is gonna be estradiol, okay, or E2. Okay, this is 1,7 beta estradiol, also known as estrogen. Okay, estrogen is so important and it's overlooked, okay, especially in men. Okay, women might focus on estrogen a little bit because they might see it from the infertility side of things or the menopause side of things, but I think men need to pay attention almost even more so because it can be a strong indicator of hypogonadism. It can be a strong indicator of why your testosterone levels could be lower. There's a lot of different things to factor in, but the most important reason why I want it on almost everybody's blood panel is because it indicates if we're eating the wrong kinds of foods. We have so many phytoestrogens, so many xenoestrogens out there right now. Okay, so much soy, so much BPA, so much this. It's so easy for our estrogen levels to just get out of control, which crush our testosterone levels, but also start this vicious feedback loop, this vicious cycle of storing fat through the aromatization process. Okay. Point is, is you should know where you stand with that because if your estrogen levels are too high, you can make some dietary changes. I have plenty of videos on that as well. Anyhow, simply put, I just wanted to provide you with that detail. The next one we wanna talk about is good old fashioned vitamin D. Vitamin D is talked about in a lot of clinical settings, but I think it's important for the patient to know what's going on here. Vitamin D2, you get from your diet, okay? Things like mushrooms, stuff like that. Then you have vitamin D3, which you get from sunlight. Very little vitamin D2 gets turned into vitamin D3. But then it's not even vitamin D3 that's utilized in the body, okay? It's 25 hydroxy D, okay? So what that means is the vitamin D3 that we get from our sunlight has to get further metabolized into 25 hydroxy D. When you get a vitamin D blood test done, it is testing the actual 25 hydroxy D. So even if you're taking a vitamin D3 supplement, it doesn't guarantee that it's getting converted into 25 hydroxy D. So at least when you get tested, you can say, wait a minute, I'm getting plenty of sunlight. Why is it not converting into the active form within the body, which could indicate further metabolic disorders or possibly even liver or kidney issues. But again, I'm not a doctor, so I say that with a very solid grain of salt. Generally, they're only going to test your vitamin D levels if you're having uh, bone issues, if you have a fracture, sometimes they'll look at that. It's very rarely part of a standard blood panel. But I will tell you just from personal experience that sometimes when people are suffering from mood swings and mood disorders, vitamin D can often be the culprit. But additionally, your immune system, okay? Vitamin D is required for your T cells to function. Your T cells go around your body and they place labels on illnesses so that other T cells can attack them. Well, but when they place those labels, they send a signal out to vitamin D, okay? And they have vitamin D receptors on them. And if there's no vitamin D, the receptor doesn't get activated and the immune system doesn't get activated. Now, I'm gonna talk about one of my employees here for just a second, I'm not gonna give him his name, but the point is, is he was always sick, okay? And he didn't get a whole lot of sunlight. He was an area from the world that didn't have a whole lot of sunlight, so he's just very fair skin. Point is, he was always sick. And then they put him on a good amount of vitamin D and what do you know? It's been almost a year and he hasn't even been sick yet. Point is, is that there are some solid case studies there. So if you're getting sick a lot, vitamin D might be something you wanna check. Then we have cortisol. Now cortisol, again, I say this all the time, it gets such a bad rap. I don't think cortisol is bad. It's only bad if it's chronically elevated and you're seeing these chronic surges of it, which is exactly why I think you should have it tested on a standard panel. If you know where your cortisol is at as a baseline, then you can know when you're actually having a surge or not. For example, my cortisol levels sit relatively high. They always have. Maybe it's because I'm a high-strung guy, I don't know, but no, they just kind of sit high. And then I know some people that sit low, but you always want to look for the big spike. Okay. Additionally, if you have a period of time where your cortisol spikes high and stays high above your normal baseline, then you know that maybe you have an infection going on or maybe you have some issue going on. So cortisol is a good indicator of stress. It's a good indicator of blood sugar, blood pressure issues. 
it's something that should be added into the mix. Now, if you're doing a lot of intermittent fasting, you definitely want to pay attention to this because that can elevate your cortisol levels, and you have to be careful. If you're someone that has chronically high levels of cortisol, and I mean high levels, maybe you need to take a break from fasting to bring those levels down because you don't want to constantly be making it so that when you fast, you barely see an increase in your cortisol. So let's just make uh, some, use some simple numbers for this. Let's say you have a cortisol level of 10, okay? And let's say normal is five. Well, when you fast, you should have a good increase in your cortisol. But if you're sitting at a 10 all the time, when you fast, you might only go up to an 11. Whereas realistically, you should be going from maybe a five to a 10, right? So you're not getting the most out of your fast because your cortisol levels are always elevated. So if you test your cortisol, then you can allow it to come down for a little bit and then reintroduce fasting. Then we have hemoglobin A1C, HbA1c. Those of you that deal with insulin resistance or deal with diabetes know exactly what that is. I'm gonna make this very simple. It's basically the glucose that binds to hemoglobin, which shows us a lagging indicator over the last three months of our blood sugar. It's great to get our fasting blood glucose tested. Yeah, for sure. But that doesn't tell us what it's constantly doing in our body, right? So when sugar binds to hemoglobin, then we have an indicator of, hey, this is where the blood sugar's been at as an average over the last three months. So if you're someone that's been dealing with a lot of excess thirst, you've been urinating a lot, you've been putting on weight, or you just have all kinds of other symptoms of insulin resistance, you definitely wanna get this looked at. But those of you that are just interested in your metabolic health and your longevity, it's nice to see a decrease in your HbA1c overall. If you started doing keto, you can see over the course of a year, your HbA1c will go down quite a bit. Okay, so it's just something to know. Anything below 5.7 is going to be normal. Then those of you that know me know that I'm a big fan of inflammation. Well, I guess I'm not a fan of it, but I'm a fan of testing it. The simplest form of inflammation that you can test is going to be C-reactive protein. It's gonna show up on almost any standard metabolic panel if you ask for it. Okay, and C-reactive protein is a protein that's created by the liver in response to inflammation. Okay, it's, so it's a very good indicator that you have some level of infection or autoimmune condition going on within your body. The prevalence of autoimmune conditions are so high right now. Okay, lots of autoimmune conditions going on out there and some that aren't even detectable that people don't even know what's going on. Okay? For example, my wife was suffering with Hashimoto's for so long before we ever figured out what was going on. And now you're seeing people diagnosed left and right with Hashimoto. Point is, I'm not a doctor, but I can tell you that inflammation is not something that you wanna have happening all the time within your body. If your C-reactive protein levels are elevated, then you can ask your doctor to start going down further rabbit holes with slightly more expensive testing like interleukin-6, uh, IL-1-beta, different interleukin testing because that's gonna be really important for you to essentially help your doctor diagnose what's going on. Now, I have a few more really important ones to talk about here, and these have a little bit more to do with your overall longevity, but also your metabolism. Uh, I do wanna make a quick note here that if you get these lab tests done and you're someone that likes to track things, I've talked about this company before, but there's a company called Heads Up Health, which is an online dashboard that allows you to plug in like all your blood tests, all your lab tests, uh, all your ketone testing, all your glucose testing, uh, all your fasting timers, everything. It's literally a digital dashboard that you can use on your phone or on your computer to keep track of everything that you're doing in terms of tracking all your, your health and metabolic stuff. It's really, really cool. So basically it's making it so that all in one spot, you have everything you need. Okay, so if you're tracking with MyFitnessPal in one app, and basically if you have a million different apps to track things, but you don't have anything to actually show you the data and actually put it all together, well, then you're kind of lost in a bunch of this stuff. So Heads Up Health is really cool. I'm big on technology and I'm big on leveraging it in a cool way as long as it's not hindering you. So this just gives you it all at a glance. Highly, highly, highly recommend that you check them out if you're someone that uses a device and wants to be able to track this stuff. So a link down below so you can check out Heads Up Health. Definitely don't want to miss out on that. Okay, let's move on to small, dense LDL. Okay, sure, I would love to tell you to just go get a basic LDL and HDL standard lipid panel, okay? That's not gonna help you out a whole lot. All it's probably going to do is freak you out because if you're doing keto, your LDL is probably gonna be high. If you're eating a good amount of saturated fat, your LDL is probably going to be high simply because your LDL receptors get um, basically turned off when you have saturated. And long story short is LDLs are just carriers of triglycerides. It doesn't mean anything other than the fact that you are mobilizing and recycling more fats at a given point in time. What we have to pay attention to is SDLDL or fractionated LDL. Okay, you wanna be able to look at fractionated cholesterols. That's the really important thing. So ask your doctor for fractionation testing. 
Okay, that way he can look at SD, small dense LDL. These are LDLs that have been exposed to sugar, triggering glycation, where basically LDL, which would normally be nice and fluffy floating around through your bloodstream, gets condensed and concentrated into this glycated caramelized onion of, a, of an LDL. Okay, that is the stuff that gets stuck in your arteries. That is the stuff that triggers more inflammation and causes a problem. You want that test done, not standard LDL, HDL. That's just gonna freak your doctor out. Then of course, very important, TSH and T3. I cannot tell you how many people go out and just get a T3 test done. T3 is great. It's going to tell you how much thyroid hormone you have floating around throughout your body. And that's fine and dandy, but that's nothing without TSH. You see, if your T3 levels are low, it's not that big of a deal. But if your T3 levels are low in conjunction with your TSH levels being high, that's when you have a problem. Let me explain. TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone. So if your T3 levels are low and your TSH is high, it means that your body is working overtime to try to create more T3. It's like the body says, uh-oh, his T3 is low. Let's try to create more. Let's try to create more. So it upregulates TSH, but your T3 is still not climbing up. That means despite your body's best efforts via TSH, it's still not elevating T3. That is a problem. But if your T3 levels are low and your TSH levels are fine, that just means that your body is fine with low levels of T3. You don't need to have jacked up levels of T3 all the time. What you don't want to have is jacked up levels of TSH, but honestly, that's about it. So you just need to have these done in tandem. So if they ever want to just measure your T4, T3, tell them, hey, no, make sure you add that TSH in there. And that's something that you should be keeping an eye on because it gives you an indicator of, hey, how is your metabolic health as far as your thyroid metabolism is concerned? Anyhow, this is the breakdown. And I hope that you can take this list to your doctor and get the best absolute testing done so that you can keep tabs on your own health. You have to be your own advocate here. Okay, no one's gonna do it for you. Our medical system is way too crowded, way too busy, and as much as your doctors probably really do care, they're seeing sometimes dozens, sometimes even hundreds of patients per day. Okay, you have to take this into your own hands. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you soon.